What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? What's up, model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today, Danny the dog and I are gonna pack up our camping supplies and hit that open road in our AMT Open Road 1970 Chevy Mini Camper Van. Oh boy, we get to go camping. Gonna go camping, gonna go camping. And if you stick to the end of this video, I'll show you a really cool video that I'm sure you will enjoy. So if you're ready, Danny, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now we start our adventure off into the mountains with our AMT Open Road Chevy Mini Motorhome. Now this kit is an actual 1970 kit. Came out in that year. And as you can see, the box has got a little bit rough over the years. This is one model kit that I again got from my good friend James, so thank you very much for letting us see this model, James, a real classic from the past. On this side of the box, we can see the cool features of this van, like this nice sink and stove, and here's a little bench for me to sit on, as well as a table. I really like this model, it's cool. And check this out, you can also build it with these other amazing features as well. And on this side of the box, you can see the really cool Gates Commando XT Heavy Duty Tires and Firestone Supreme Tires. You get these cool custom American Mag wheels, or you can use the stock wheels and caps. There's our steering wheel and this big heavy duty frame in order to help us get to our camping destination. And if we just move the box over again, you can see this wonderful V8 motor. Thank you for that, Danny. And now let's show all the people out in YouTube land just what's inside under the lid. Well, right away we get our instructions for our open road van. Now, we've got the chrome here. These are all put in Ziploc bags because the original uh, bags, of course, would have shredded up and died years ago. Now, I do believe we've got the glass in here as well as some other components. Here's some of the original shrink wrap for the uh, parts that are in here. Again, not too bad. There's the van body. And then here we get our, look at all these different lights and colors that we get. That's pretty cool. Then we've got all the other van components like our frame and the seat in there. And then toward the bottom of the box, we've got all our tires and our metal axles. Now we get to take a look at the instruction sheet for our open road Chevy Mini Motorhome. And we got our engine here and our wheels as well. So let's just zoom in on that. Here we have the instructions for our big Chevy 350, which powers our van through all those wintry mountains. We got an air cleaner, a carpet tutor. We got that intake manifold there. There's our distributor. We've got our coil. Then we've got an oil filler tube, a radiator hose, our starter, which goes to the right side of our engine. Our engine is two pieces with a transmission off the back. We got a nice oil pan there and an oil filter. There's our cylinder heads and valve covers and our exhaust manifolds. You need one on each side, of course. Then we've got our front timing cover and alternator, the water pump, which glues on here, a nice fan belt and pulleys and a fan. Now, taking a look at our wheels, we actually get a couple of options here. We could use the stock steel wheels with the four dog dish hubcaps, you know, dog dish hubcaps. Hmm, I wonder if I can get some doggy treats in one of those. Anyway, you also get these really cool mag wheels you could put in there. And then our front two tires. And off the back, we actually get two different sets of tires. So these, of course, are the Gates Commando tires, which are better in the mud. At least I find it that way. And then you get uh, mag wheels or custom reverse wheels here, as well as our inner backs to the wheels. And the inners for our fronts, again, the dog dish hubcap and the mags. So really cool. Well, that's that's a rear wheel. So you could either have them match or you could use the uh, more mud friendly tires. So now we begin looking at our heavy duty basic chassis. And here we got our big fat frame sitting there. And there's the floor pan that it goes down to. We've got a number two cross member for our transmission. And then we've got a transmission mount here. Oh, well, I guess that's not for our transmission. Anyway, there's our number one cross member, and it all goes together and looks really nice. Next up, we need our suspension components to get us through those mountains. So here we have our rear springs, with our leaf springs, of course. 
our upper and lower rear axle, we've got two shock absorbers, and then we've got our front suspension with the upper and lower A-arm type assembly, and then we've got this engine mount and our springs, and then here we've got some uprights as well, and then we've got our tie rod and our steering arms, and then the steering column and the idler arm bracket. So once we have all of that together, we can add in the midship bearing, our front drive shaft and rear drive shaft, the trailer hitch with the trailer ball in case we want to bring a little boat along, and then we can put our wheels with the metal axles through the differential, and then here we've got our front um, wheels and a backing plate and the stubs. There's our firewall, our battery, our vapor can, the two-piece radiator, this of course is the radiator shroud, and then we can drop in our nice Chevy 350 motor. In this panel we're looking at the interior, basically the front part of the interior. So we've got our two front seats, and look at that, that's three pieces right there. And then we've got this cover over top of the floor, and an engine cover. There's our instrument panel, and then we've got an option of a different custom type steering wheel, or the stock steering wheel, and then a shift in turn signal levers. Panel 7 shows the rear assembly with the glass going in place in behind on the body. And then we've got our license plate and our tail lamps, our nice chrome rear bumper, and the spare tire cover in two pieces. So once this is all together, it'll look really, really nice. Panel 8 really takes up the entire back of the instruction sheet. So here we can see our camper top, and you can put it on if you really want to, or just leave a regular roof on there. There we got the camper front and the side windows. There's an interior panel that goes into this table. Well, the panel doesn't go in the table, but the table does go in the van. There's the support. There's a flip seat in the back. We've got our hood. Look at the windshield wipers on here. There's the front grille and bumper. We've got all the uh, different lights, optional road lights, license plate, windshield, side marker lights. Wow, there's so much stuff, I don't even know if I can name all this. We've got three-piece side mirrors. There's these side insert panels down here, different glass that you can use. Or there's even like a smooth side panel you could put in if you don't want this as a camper. you got a storage shelf in there, two-piece back seat. Look at this nice display here. There's our sink and our stove. Oh, you put it all together up here as well. I mean, this thing is just amazing. Now if you think the instructions are cool, where do you see the plastic parts? Show them, Trevor! Thank you so much, Danny, for that great review of the instructions. Now here is our body for our Chevy. Unfortunately, it is warped, and the warpage actually made it crack. Now, that's sort of a sad, unfortunate thing. You'll never really know with the kit from the 70s just what's inside as far as this sort of thing goes. At any rate, though, it is still a nice casting. Maybe I can correct it by, you know, bending it into place. Maybe with the grill and radiator in the front and the glass might be able to get it back in line. However, as you can see, there's not much flash. There is great detail on these doors and uh, the door handles. You do get the Chevy logo on there, as well as the side marker lamp, or at least a place to set the side marker lamp, as we saw. Yeah, you can see there's the uh, little vents across the hood, the or back here anyway. The problem with this whole thing is everything opens, so as you can see here, this big empty panel where we glue in the camper panels, all of that causes a lot of weakness in here. There's not much really holding the van together on these pillars, as you know. But overall, it's not bad. I mean, I hope I can salvage this. <laughs> There's the uh, Chevrolet logo just above the license plate, like on the real thing. There's all our hinges. There is a little bit of flash along here that we'll have to take care of. There is a roof molded in place, which the camper roof, of course, would glue onto. Overall, with uh, despite the warpage, though, I think this would make a really good kit. Here we have the floor panel as well as our full frame. So if we take a look at a floor panel, you can see that it's nice and smooth underneath here. There are a couple of mold marks up around the front and quite a bit of flash that we need to take off. Overall, not bad. There's the steps for the front doors and the one for the side panel door. Really uh, good shape, even though it's all smooth. A nice platform to begin with. So I'll just move that up there for a minute. Now if we take a look at the full perimeter frame, you can see some sink marks up in the sides. 
which will have to be filled with some putty. And there are some bits of flash on these cross braces, which could present a bit of a problem. But overall, I think it is quite nice. A few mold marks underneath, which you'll need to take care of in order for everything to fit together nicely on this bottom floor pan. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the floor pan does have a carpet texture up here, just in front of that engine cover. Our next two parts trees include our suspension components and the components that make up our Chevy 350, as well as a lot of these steering parts and our differential. So taking this up into the camera, let's just have a look at this motor. You can see that the detailing is quite nice. You get a wonderful automatic transmission there, complete with the automatic transmission pan. There's our oil pan, our cylinder heads. The battery is nice, accurate looking for the era. There's our distributor, and then of course our exhaust manifolds and all the other good bits for this. Very nicely done, turning it over. Maybe a few mold marks under there, but nothing you can't get rid of and correct out. Now we'll bring up the rear differential and our springs and everything into the camera. I do believe a few of the parts have fallen off this parts tree, but overall, I mean, this looks really nice. Really heavy duty rear differential as well. So there's our components for the engine and rear axle. Here we have that front brace that Danny thought was for the transmission. Sorry. And then we've got our radiator and our fan shroud and one of the wheels our lower A arms, our firewall, the wheel backs, there's our muffler and exhaust system, and our dashboard. So if you bring this up to the camera, you can see the nice texture on that radiator. Looks really good. Really, really good. And then we've got our dashboard over here. Again, all the nice details of the instrument panel. Interestingly, I don't really see a glove box in here, but there must be one. There's our firewall, again, with all the nice little bolts and rivets on there. Very nicely done. If you turn it over, you can see the pedals, and the hole actually allows the drive shaft, or the steering column, actually, <laughs> to go right through that hole and to make it look accurate. So again, very nicely done for the vintage. Here's all the components that ended up becoming loose in the bag, as well as the side window bits. So these are the panels you would use if you don't want to build the camper. They would blank out that space. These are the camper side windows, of course. We have our spare tire front, and this little weird U-shaped thing is actually the back part of that spare tire. There's our wheel backs, the intake manifold, the little square that goes in the floor. There's our towing bar. Here's one of the other components for the interior. Actually, two of them. Those could be the uh, front wheel arches on the floor. There's the center console. Here's our front bucket seats in the back. Oh, I know what these are. These are the uh, mounts for those bucket seats. There's our hood and then our suspension braces, the rear spring. We also have shock absorbers, a steering wheel, another brace. I do believe that would be the start or the alternator maybe. And then here we've got the front drive shaft. So I'm not going to bring these parts up to the camera, but you can see just how cool they are. Oh, and here's the wheel back. There's for the deeper wheels, and then for the rear wheels, and the front two wheels. Here we have all the camper components, and this is where it gets really cool. You've got all the different panels in here. There's our stove elements, and then the curtains on the windows, and all the seats and everything that makes this whole van really worth the money. So I'll just move these off to the side and then we can take a look at them piece by piece up into the camera. So to begin with, let's take a look at that. Look at those elements on our gas stove there. It looks like the real thing. Then if we uh, turn this up, you can see there's our oven there and then all these little cabinet doors, inner panels. There's the sink. That's awesome stuff. Awesome sauce. <laughs> You also have to get rid of these mold marks off the back, though. That's the only problem. And these little pieces here are actually for the roof. Now, this is that extended roof. We can just take a look at it briefly. See, they would go into there, and this whole thing would glue onto the top of the camper. Once you get all the flash out of there, of course. There's a nice texture under here, but there are also a lot of sink marks. Although I don't think anyone would really see that texture at all since uh, the way it sits on the van top. There's the inner panel. Look at that nice pleating in there. Really cool. Again, mold marks off the back. 
Here's one of the wooden doors for one of the elements in here. I'm not quite sure which, just by looking at the parts. That, of course, was Danny with the instructions. But again, we've got some mold marks and bits that need to be removed. Now check out this cool looking seat. Again, really great detail on here. Excellent for your van. We also have these little hatch doors, I do believe. Again, uh, mold marks off the back. There's another one. Oh, one of these could be the table. Yeah, that would be the, our, our table there. So again, really cool. More detail on the seat there. I'm bringing this panel up. Again, we've got some more of those doors and other components. There's all our curtains sitting there on the end. Again, very nicely done. Excellent work. Wood paneling on this piece. Probably one of the bulkheads or something in the van. And then there we've got some more. A really great wood grain texture. There's the front of the camper. Awesome. Mold marks off the back though, so get ready with your sandpaper to clear that up. Now I'm not quite sure what this is. It looks like it could be... Uh, almost look, looks like a porta potty, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe it is. But anyway, overall, I do believe all these parts are excellent. Here we have a really amazing chrome parts tree from 1970. Keep in mind this chrome has been on here for about 52 years or so, as of the making of this video. Here we've got the nice dog dish hubcaps to put Danny's treats into. Although, uh, I like these mag wheels as well. These kind of mag wheels would have come out around 1965, just so you know. There's a steering wheel. And then we've got all the different side mirrors, valve covers, chrome springs, air cleaner, you name it. Bumpers, windshield wiper blades. Really awesome stuff considering the vintage. They went all out on this. Take a look at that nice grill in there. Little holes to put in your clear lights. Again, awesome stuff. Really excellent. Well done. There's a timing chain cover. Again, cool stuff and uh, well worth the money. Here we have all our glass components. There's the front windshield. We've got our side windows, our rear window, more side windows again. These are the side windows for the driver and passenger front doors. And they're sunken in as well, so they will fit flush with the body. And that's what's really nice about these. There we got our headlights and fog light covers as well. And here's another neat little treat of this van. Look at all the different red and yellow lights you get. You could really build a really cool looking rescue vehicle from this kit. There's four of the red little domes as well as two yellow ones. So you could have them one yellow, one red, or two yellow, or whatever you wanted to do. And there's all our rear lights and side marker lights as well. Really awesome stuff. Here we have our tires, and we've got our Firestone Supremes up here, and then our Gates Commando tires in the back. Let's take a look at the Firestone Supreme tires. Again, nicely done. There is a white wall on there. The sides look great. The tread looks great. The only problem I have with these ones is they are rock hard. <laughs> But I can always find some others in more recent kits. Now let's take a look at these awesome Gates Commando tires. There is a web in the center, which of course you'll have to cut out. But that tread looks really amazing. Look at the side sort of pie crust type on the edges here. Again, awesome tires to get you out of that mud and snow on the camping trips. Now normally I like to chew on those tires, but I think those ones would really break my teeth. Whew. Anyway, here is our decal sheet, and as you can see, we've got the USA! And then, this is really interesting, it's like a tour of South America. So here we've got a, a sticker for Chile, for Guatemala, for Paraguay, for Venezuela, Ecuador, Colombia, Nicaragua, Peru, Mexico, Argentina, Costa Rica, Panama, Uruguay. And then we can head up north to Canada with the nice Rocky Mountains or end up in Brazil. And then we've got San Francisco here, and we've got New Orleans, Los Angeles. Ooh, there's a kitty. Woof, woof. Um, sorry about that. There's Hawaii. Uh, we've got England down here in Detroit, Las Vegas, Chicago, Gates Tires. Well, that'd be a decal on the side. And then uh, we also have these nice license plates here. Oh, there's Montreal. Vive la Quebec. Uh, and uh, then you can have the boondocker decal on there, 
or the open road up top, just like on the box. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little camping trip and that this video helps you on your future model car purchases. Oh wow, making this video was so much fun. I can't wait to do another one. Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.